Hey guys, so we got the car set up here. We lined our timing marks up. This is supposed to be up. Um, it showed these dots were supposed to be up, but I don't... I guess it gets rotated once you put the sprockets on. I have to look. So this one has uh, dots too that are up here in the diagram. So they show putting these up, but then I guess it gets rotated. But I'm going to just take everything off. We've got a new chain set here. It's a cheap set, so I don't know how good this is going to be. Just trying to help my friend out here. I'm see if I can get this going. I guess I printed out a bunch of the same page. So right here, it's supposed to line. Uh, do I have it on somewhere else? Oh, here it is. I have this page. So you gotta line this up with the triangle, which I did, and that's supposed to be there, and that's supposed to be there. So we come down here. You see that's lined up with the triangle. Right here is the indent um, on our sprocket. It goes there, and then we got that one there. And then that one over there. So I'm gonna get this all apart. I gotta get the power steering pump off, and then we'll see if this how far off this is. Oh, and there's a lot of play in this tensioner. When I rotated, it tightened back up, but the chain could almost skip a tooth on the water pump. That's how bad it was. So we'll get this power steering pulley off, and then we'll see, or the pump, and we'll see if uh, if we can get this all apart. Okay, guys. So. I changed this uh, tension right here. I took the cams out so all these caps are loose. But this one, somebody broke the bolt off. This bolt was just sitting on there doing nothing. So I gotta try to drill that out. So I'm gonna torque all these back down because we've got new tension. Everything is lined up. Um, we had to rotate the cam, but. They're, they're lined up with the dot. Like the, the links are lined up with the dot. You see the dot there? And there's a dot there. And when I rotate it over, let's see. You just keep moving back to that one spot. Let's see. There we go. There's our dot. Down there's our dot. So, I don't have the pin pulled. Also, the old tensioner, I took it off. The plastic must have already been broken. It just fell out. So the plastic guide that went on the top. So that fell down, I think it went in my pan. So we're gonna get these tightened down and then I'll draw that one out because I don't wanna have this stuff loose because try not to get metal in the places. I may even put the bearing, I might put this bearing cap back on. So that way when I'm drilling, I'm just drilling out through this hole. That way all the debris can get collected in the hole. Okay guys, so we got this bolt coming out. Let's see if we can get it out with the drill. I drilled the center with a smaller drill bit, then I went to a bigger drill bit. Look at that. And I was using my little vacuum cleaner here that I got from my truck to uh, vacuum up all the debris. Look at that. Oh, and it swept the bolt up. Look at that. That's actually pretty impressive. So I love this thing so far. Oh, and I use these bits. I, I use a lot of Mac drill bits because they warranty every size against dullness and breaking. These are all left-handed. Yeah, chains all lined up. You can see our timing marks are dead at the top. Dot here, dot here. Right where our chains are. You guys can see that now. Um, that's what it shows in repair information. Dot and dot. Same thing on the back. So hard to see. Sorry about that accident, I can stop. But I rotate the camshaft dots right there. The flash on one. There we go. So dots right there. Dots there. So, those should be in time perfectly. So I guess we'll pull our pins. There we go. And now we gotta put the other thing on. I also want to check. Should have checked before I did that. I want to look to see if our lobes just make sure nothing moved on here. <sighs> I'm just worried that maybe something might have shifted. Maybe that's our issue. Even though it shouldn't have shifted because remember our tone ring was on. I think our tone ring. Because like, we can only look at the intake. Or I mean, not the intake. We only look at the front bank. So yeah, I guess that would be the intake cam on the front bank. That's the only one that we could see in our waveform. Hopefully I still have the videos from the previous 
on this, but the timing was off according to our known good. Um, let's see. I just don't know how accurate these photos are. Which one are we doing first? So that should be the front cam right there. That looks like our cam lobes. Looks like they point to the front. These point to the front. These front two are pointing up this way. That's what it looks like. It looks like they point up this way in the front, and then these other ones are even level, and that's what we have here. He's pointing up to the front, and then those look level. With the head, because if we look at the head, that's level. So I think that matches our photo right there. So that one looks good. Okay, so I'm going to, going to I guess go over because I torqued everything down. Now we gotta get do the primary one, so we gotta put that all on. So I'll get that all on, and then we'll go from here. Okay, guys, I have everything torqued down, but the uh, the bolts for the sprockets, so this one and that one. But look at that, our timing's lined up. Our dots are on the top. See our chain links are on the top. Same over here. Cart chain links. Put it top there, top there. So this is where our arrow points now. I don't remember where it was before. The same way with this one. There's a dot at the top. Right there's a dot right at the top. But there's no colored links on this. Then we got our crank pulley tight, or uh, not pulley, but our sprocket. It's chain on. There's no. There's no um, slack on the front side. All the slack was on the back side. Put a new tensioner in. So that's going to have to prime up. This is all tight. Um, all the guides are new. Look at that. Same here on the top. Yeah, all the guides are new. New guides. New guides, new tensioner. You can see our tensioner down there. It's a little blurry, but that's all in there now. Things all tight. Um, just don't know what was off. Although, I did have to rotate our crank back, like, one tooth, so that might have been off a tooth. Or there just might have been that much slack. Uh, I have to go back to my video to see if our dots were all at the top or not. Oh, what is this? I don't think we have that. Could that be our whole issue? Um, oh, is that just a tool to purge it? I think that's just a tool to purge it. Install chain guide access plug. Cylinder head. Okay, there's a tool for that. That's why we don't have that tool because we're not resetting it. Okay. So that was all good. Okay. So now we're back to putting it back together. So that's good. So we're there. Okay. So we'll get this back together the rest of the covers on then we'll see how this sounds hopefully it's fixed
Okay, guys, I finally found the links, but they're hard to spot. So we have this one down here, okay? See that double? I had to flip the chain on around. I had it on backwards. But this one, I have lined up up here. But see which way I have to rotate this for this to line up? Um, there's no way to get this to... Then I'm going to be able to get this to line up on the crank because this is going to be upside down. So this ain't making any sense. I think I got the wrong chain or something. Maybe the wrong chain came get. I'm going to lay this down next to the original, the factory chain, and we'll go and mark it. Okay, guys, I don't know why it's so hard for me to find all this information. So the double link goes to the top here. I was putting it on the crank. So that was one of my issues. That's why they didn't line up. Then two, we have to rotate this using... A 3 8 uh, ratchet and rotate these to line the bolt holes up because the bolt holes don't line up until you rotate either cam so that's interesting so I'm gonna do that I'm gonna get this back together and then we should be good to go okay, guys I was having an issue starting this but look at this we have no instinct back in I wonder why Look at that, it's pouring right out the bottom. There was no intake vacuum on this. Um, and it's just pouring out. I had caught, capped off the EGR here because somebody had broken a bolt on the EGR down there. I don't know if you guys can see it with the smoke, but there's a, that bottom bolt is uh, broken. The top one was fine. That's how it was. Um, because the EGR could spin in a circle, but I want to show you guys what happens with our engine vacuum right here. So I'm going to set this up. Let's see, can we hang this one? There we go. Hang it on the car. Let's see. So there's our vacuum gauges. Let's see, where's our key? Oh, yeah, I put the key. Where did it fall on the floor? Yeah, I don't see the key. I might have to find it real quick. Okay, here, I'll show you guys what happens. So, I'm gonna bring my scan tool back up here. Let's see. So, here's our. our map and our engine rpm also comes in and out i don't know if it's just because it thinks it's in clear flood mode but watch here we'll crank it see the pressure went up and it goes down so that's what it does there and then if we look at our map up here it does the same thing i think that's because of our smoke coming our smoke being in there so we're going to uh Take this intake back off. Well, I never took it off, but we're gonna take it off. We're gonna inspect it. Okay guys, so I got the the gaskets out. You can see like it was like really caked there, but like there's no the gaskets seem recessed on these. So I don't know why they're recessed, but I feel no raised area. So I'm going to Replace these. Okay, guys, so we got this put on here. You can see how much they stick out now. Again, when they're pushed in. Look at that. So, way different. So, I'm going to get this put down, folded down. We'll get the gaskets on the top. And then uh, we'll see if we have a leak. Okay, we got it all back together. Um, let's see what happens here. Our vacuum gauge is still set up. Let's do a clear flight crank. That is weird. I just wonder if maybe they mixed the cams up? I don't know what else would do this. Because it has to be mechanical. Let's smoke this intake again. There you go. So now we have no leaks. Oh, there's nothing leaking out of here. We may even start to build pressure. Let's 
see, watch. Watch when I pop this off. Watch how much smoke comes out. Look at that. So we were building pressure in the intake. So, we don't... So, all right, we have no intake leaks now, so it has to be down to mechanical timing. Um, I guess we can go in the cylinder. I don't know if I can look at this tomorrow and see if, it, uh, if something's going on inside the motor, like somebody mixed parts up. Okay, guys. So I got these part numbers on these camshafts. There's one. Here's the other one. I tried looking these up. I can't find anything on it. So I'm going to rotate this motor back to the dots lineup. I'm going to try to compare it to like a video. See if they uh, match up. But I'm just wondering if these cams are just on the wrong cylinder heads or something. Uh, video online. If we look at our low, see our dots over here. So, oops, our dots right there. So it's not up and down yet. This lobe is perfectly straight. This one's almost all the way down. It's pointing down, like, not quite perfectly straight down. So if we look at this, this guy's lobe is pointing almost straight up and down. And his dot's over here. So mine's already straight up and down. So this should actually be passed um, straight, according to this video. Um, Does he uh, show the other? Does he rotate the other one? I don't think he rotates the other bank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this intake back off, and then we'll check this one again. I was trying to see if there was a. I'm gonna see if I can find another video, see where these cams are supposed to be pointed, see if they're mixed up, because I can't find any information on these part numbers. Okay guys, so I found a video from Cloy's. And if we look, this lobe right here, when this one's, the dots right here, this one's supposed to be vertical. Um, so I think that one's pretty close, because it's almost vertical. Uh, does it show us? Yeah, and this one's pointing down. So I'm wondering if these intake cams are mixed up or something. Let's see. So that's showing when that's supposed to be like that. This first lobe is supposed to be vertical. And then can we see what the other one's done? We can't see where this other one's supposed to be. Repeat the removal and then simply replace the So Doug, special thanks to Rob, you know, pass from both. If the price still made changes, the I can't tell if they made their stuff vertical, but yeah, it doesn't look like it. Uh, this is just complicated. The Chrysler balance correct mid placement and intention in a camshaft after. Take note that the four of 105 inches to 250 inch pounds. Spring out more tackle. Place your tool. Install the cam. Here is that tightening sequence. Found an appliance sequence. Let's assemble the secondary drive system. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna have to do some more research. I gotta find something. Something's not right. Or the other possibility is our crank mark or our crank sprocket spun. I don't know if they spin on this. I don't know if there's a groove. I couldn't find information on that either. So I put the motor back together. I changed the spark plugs. Look at these spark plugs. They were all just completely black. Okay. And what I ended up doing, I went in cylinder and I got a capture. It was right here and I measured it. Um, I didn't get to record this. It says on the phone. But... We had 1.5, it says it right here, 1.5, yeah, 1.5 volts right there in the center. So 1.5 volts is equal to 150 PSI. It's one volt per PSI. Or not one volt. Um, one volt per 100 PSI, sorry, it's on here. 
Um, I was using this knockoff WPS, so right there, one volt equals 100 psi on the top. So that was on this cylinder. So I stuck it back together. I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna unplug the crank sensor. So I unplugged the crank sensor. Is it still unplugged? Yeah, it's still unplugged. It's right there. I unplugged it. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna crank this and see if it starts. So let's crank it real quick. I'll show you guys. So. Oh, let's see. There we go. So it started. Look at that. And now it's running. And it sounds really good. Um, so I'm going to shut it back off. Oh, that doesn't sound good. Uh, I might just have to get air out of the system because I didn't run it long. So. Yeah, I'm wondering if the tension is just out to pressurize. And then, uh, maybe our noise will go away. But that's what it sounds like. Um, I don't want to get it too hot because I want to put cool coolant in it and then we'll let it run for a while. Okay, guys, I filled the cooling system. Um, I just need to check the power steering pump. Like, this rack is leaking, so there's no fluid in it. Um, it took one and a half gallons. I only got, like, a tiny bit out of this car. I just want to make sure that this power steering ain't going to, like, rub on anything, like it's not laying on the exhaust or anything. Okay, we're not laying on the exhaust. So, now we can start this up and just let it run for a little bit. Um, I have to put the power steering and stuff on. I just want to make sure everything else is good. I didn't do a crank sensor. I probably should order a crank sensor a while just in case we need it. Well, that doesn't sound good. What the heck just happened? How do we go from like having compression and not having compression? Oh my god, something's going on with this motor. Did we just had it running? Uh, what is going on? I have it all back together already. So I think my crank sensor is still unplugged. Yeah, just laying down there. We just had it running, it was running great. Okay guys, so I got it all tore back apart again. Um, we got this, uh, uh, the, the notch is lined up right there with the arrow. So I'm going to pull the tensioner back out and we'll pull this chain back off and we'll see if we can get this lined back up. Um, this kind of sucks. Hoping no valves got bent. I got everything back together with the cloist tensioner. Sorry, my friends are doing body work on my van. Um, I guess we'll start this up and we'll see if it starts. Let's see. This sounds like there's no compression again. Hmm. 
How is that possible? We just retimed everything. Well, that's all the valves got bent. But it felt like there was compression. I wonder if the crank is even spinning. Let's see, can you get a good photo? Let's see if I can see if you guys up somewhere. Let's see it spin. Oh yeah. So guys, look at this. crazy that that thing broke like that and I had to get a new plate for back here too because the plates broke